Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Um, kind of wanted to film a quick intro, and I'm going to play the server band while I'm doing it. Um, to this video, it is a color supply haul video. It is, from you, what you can tell in the pictures, a pretty big one. Um, I had a lot of stuff come in the last few weeks, and um, so I kind of wanted to get it all out of the way in one haul. However, um, this was filmed over the course of like a week because I had to swatch a lot of things and um, so it might seem a little disjointed because I'm obviously is the way this week's went in different moods and in different different modes when I'm swatching so if it seems a little disjointed I apologize um, and uh, but I did kind of want to film just tying it all together um, I don't have any current plans to buy any other supplies before the end of the month. However, we know that that um, doesn't always happen, right? Like, I say that, and then we laugh, and then I go buy some more. Um, but as of right now, there aren't any plans to um, buy any more coloring products for the end of the month. I did, um, I guess want to kick things off. I know I forgot to mention these in all the other things I was doing. So I've been on the hunt for some different types of water, like watercolor and acrylic brushes. And I found these. They are Transon Red Sable Filbert paintbrushes. Um, and I like these because they've got the kind of um, tapered edge to them. I don't have a lot of brushes that have those. And um, and, and I've even got the smaller ones as well. So um, I'm, I use my brushes like, probably shouldn't, but like I'll use my watercolor brushes, designated watercolor brushes for like acrylic paint and stuff just because the edge of them, the type of brush that they are, gives me a better line and it works the way I'm trying to make it work when I'm painting. So I don't know like if I'm committing some sort of art crime or something by doing that. But <laughs> um, so I thought I would just pick up some more brushes. I will link these in the comments. I have no idea how they do, um, but they look pretty nice to me. They were, um, so yeah, I'm just adding them to my collection of brushes, so. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started with the rest of the video, and like I said, I do apologize if it seems a bit, bit disjointed. That was just how <clears throat> it all came together, and this is, <laughs> this is one of the reasons I don't buy a lot of supplies, because I know, and, and nobody makes me do this, but I know when I get ready to um, do the supply haul, I want to swatch things out. I want to show what it looks like, and I want to, you know, inform people who might be making purchasing decisions, and um, so they turn into um, long videos for that purpose, so um, that's, again, the fewer supplies I buy, the less I have to do that, so... But this, this month, you're in for a treat. So, let's get started. So, let's start with the smallest, one of the smallest items. And um, let's look at the luminance. So, um, the luminance pencils, when I picked them up, um, I picked up the original set of 72. Then realized there's actually 100 on this um, swatch chart. And so Luminance had put out a portrait set of 20 that um, this still doesn't add up to 100, so I don't quite get it. But um, anyway, they put out a set of 20 that got you almost all the way there. However, there were about four pencils. Yeah, I was still missing four pencils. And again, I don't understand how all this adds up to 100, but somehow I bet if I count all these... It will come to 100. But anyway, 
So, um, oh, because, yeah, white's another color. Okay, so one thing I realized when I was watching the 20 set, the one that's called Butternut 542 is actually called Light Flesh on this uh, chart. So this was actually where it belonged. And um, so I didn't need that one, the Light Flesh 10%. That's what Butternut is. So I made sure to look for the numbers instead of the names since some of the names seem different. But I picked up the four I was missing from Blick. So let's fill those in. We have Dark, Thylo, oh boy, Thylo Cyanine Green. I think this was a color. I mean, I like having the skin tones too, but having another good dark green like this was um, something I was looking forward to in this set. Normally I don't swatch on camera, however, since this is just four pencils. So this is looks like a nice complement to like the moss green, the more brownish greens that are in the set. So you had a bluish dark green with the dark sap green, and so this gives you a brownish green. A yellowish green, I guess, is probably the actual term. So that's cool. All right. And then we have dark flesh, which is actually called Boy, this is 741. Um, I gotta take my glasses off. Hang on. Um, Tara Shaws, Shod 5? Warm Earth 5. So instead of called Dark Flesh, it's called Warm Earth. Okie dokie, that's fine. For those of you that aren't familiar with these types of swatch charts, um, my plan form is to cut them out, use or use my laminator first, cut them out, and put them on a ring so that I can easily flip to the color I need and compare it to like a palette or another set of pencils, or easily you know put it up against a, uh, a coloring page just to see you know. I feel like these are easier to use than like the big charts when it comes to uh, using them on a coloring page. So the other one is 748 Warm Earth 70%. Oh no, my heater turned off. Sorry. I realized last night because I had that heater, little heater running like right next to me. And y'all still can't hear. I gotta say, this headset isn't the worst one in the world. Because it doesn't pick up a lot of outside noise at all. So thank goodness for that. Gives you like a nice yellow-brown <laughs> color. And then finally we have Natural Russet. I believe is what it's actually called on this. I used these pencils on a page last month and I really like them so I am eager to try them again. And there we go. So let me grab, oh, there it is, it's right next to me. Grab the case. This is my combo Derwent Light Fest and Luminance case. Probably would be a good idea in the long run, though I would have to find homes for my other cases to actually combine them like this. This is probably a good way to do it so all right 
So here's the russet. Hmm. I wonder why there are two there. So there's burnt sienna, there's dark flesh. Oh, I I put that space there for the light flesh one, and turns out I have that one, so I just need to move it over. All right, so. Warm Earth should go here. The darker one, the lighter one should go here. So I'm off one, but that's fine. I have plenty of room in this case. And so there's, and I know that's going to drive people crazy. So I will go fix it. One of the things I need to do anyway that I have been doing is writing all the numbers in the case. So it's very easy to replace the pencils when I take them out. So... I didn't do that with these because I was just lazy and I really just wanted to get them in the case. <laughs> so I need to do that anyway. So there you go. My luminance set is complete finally. So that's exciting. So there's that. Um. Well, I'll start off with the extras I picked up. So, um, if you saw in the intro video, I did pick up some the Pit Artist Pens brush set. Um, I did check the Blick, um, compared all the colors to like the open stock, and this is the full color set. However, um, the only things that are missing are some metallics. So I decided to get those to try them. This is gold and copper. Thought I'd get some to try. These are the brush pens, I believe. Nope, I'm wrong. These are like a fine tip. That's fine. I'm curious to see how those do. But I, one thing I do love is me some brush tip um, black pit artist pens. I use these all the time. Like when I'm outlining in the Disney book, sometimes when I outline some pictures, I just want to go back over the lines to darken them to make them really pop like I did in that Hannah Lamb picture last month. So I picked up some more of those to keep them in stock. So I'm going to stick these in my overflowing drawer. And um, I had to pick up one marker that was dry in my Co last Copic um, sketch kit, which is the acid green. Um, we are going to test it real quick just to make sure. Nice and juicy. Well, juicy enough. So good there. I can put that back in my thing. I was so. I know you can buy refills and the next big goal is going to be to buy refills however um i found that if the marker is super dry and stays super dry for a long time like the tips never quite work right even if you refill it so had it been going dry but still had some uh, pigment in it i would have bought the refill but the fact that it was so dry i don't know how long it had been that way and so um, I didn't want to go the trouble refilling it and then it just not take. So a couple other things I can show you before we get to the real big stuff. Um, I did pick up some more acrylic, ac acrylic, ar, ar, that's, that's the way the pirates, uh, paint is ar acrylic. <sighs> anyway, I picked up some more, um, brushes that I wanted to use for acrylic paints. Um, really, I'm finding that it doesn't matter whether my brush is labeled watercolor or acrylic. If it works for what I need it for, I use it. So um, this was a Blick Essential set that I picked up. Um, I've picked up quite a few watercolor brushes specific, but I hadn't really picked up a lot of um, multi-use type brushes recently. So I thought I'd pick up another set. And this thing is a butcher tray. So it's an all metal palette tray. It uh, 
supposed to be I, I was looking at these on um, Blick so I have palettes to use to mix paint but I never seem to have enough room when I'm using multiple paints and like particularly with watercolors I don't feel like I have enough room to really mix and just just do what I want to do in a big flat surface that's just all I need is a big flat surface so um, this seemed like it would fit the bill I think this is actually the smallest of the three you could get and I'm so glad I got the smallest one because this is really all I need if I had bought any of the other ones like I that would be if I had like a studio or whatever so this is a metal tray and I'm just excited to see I don't know if it'll stain I don't know anything like that but we shall see um, I just needed some versatility in my palettes so Okay, I do want to, um, what do I want to start with first? I'm sitting here just looking at the stuff. Um, well, we all know what I really, really want to get to first, and that's going to be these puppies. So, I have sets A and B of the Copic Sketch, and some, some random skin tones, um, and... I uh, splurged and bought myself the B set like around Christmas right after I got my job and I just I don't know I've been working so hard the last couple months and shopping's really been my my go-to <laughs> to feel better and I just got it in my head of you know go ahead and get the whole set you know you love your Copics this the goal is to get the whole set so rather than just do a set here do a set there run the risk of them being out of stock why don't you just go ahead and get the rest of the sets um, it's you know just go ahead um, and um, and I did so this is color set D and color set C I um, have E coming but it won't be here till the end of the month so the thing about E, um, what's weird is, so these were in a U.S. warehouse, I assume, because they got to me really within like a week. Um, the E set is coming from overseas, and I got a note saying they usually just ship them without the plastic um, packaging because when they used to do that, like I guess because how far they went and stuff, like the plastic would just be in just shatter and like I mean it's plastic but this type of plastic that shatters like could be dangerous and people could cut themselves on them and I wouldn't want to pick um, markers out of a shattered plastic case so they just send them free form without the plastic case which is fine this is not the way I keep them so I'm not stressed about it but some people might be and they were the only retailer so I went made sure I went through the Copic sketch like store page and picked all these up just to make sure that these were like legitimate retailers so at least as far as I could tell so um, so yeah so set C if we just kind of look at it at a glance um, I pull my thing over here it fills out the rest of the warm grays from um, set B I believe you get what is that toner gray looks like you get to the full set of that um, you get some neutral grays which were also in set B so you get those filled out as well um, get some nice browns here um, some of these are ones I already have like the cotton pearl I picked up in a uh, like a portrait set a while back um, what is that one? I can't tell because of the plastic. Some type of green. So then it's just complementary colors. So you get some light blue greens. Quite a few greens in this set. Um, I'm trying to show you these because when I go to swatch them, I have one big chart that I swatch all my Copics in. So um, it's going to be hard to show the colors separate. So this is why we're doing this now. Looks like a bunch of greens and a bunch of yellow greens in this set. So if that's something you're looking for, um, this might be a good set to choose from. Looks like you've got some nice um, oranges in this set. 
um, some reds and pinks to fill it out. So very cool there. Set D. So it looks like all the grays are, are pretty much come in the first three sets. So A, B, and C are your where you get all your grays. Um, and it's plenty of different types of grays. Um, though I don't see like a blue gray or a green gray like I see in some of the budget friendly markers. So set D, sorry for the shine here, gives you more browns, more neutrals. Um, you get some fluorescence in here which is very cool. A fluorescent violet. Now I don't think I've seen one of those. Like fluorescent blue, fluorescent blue green. I like um, I haven't seen some of those different types of colors, so I'm curious to see how those swatch. Um, quite a few blue greens and blues. This one seems to have quite a few blues in the set and, and blue violet. So blue green, blue and, vi and violet in here. Um, then some yellows, not quite as many reds or pinks in this one. So um, just if you're curious, this seems like it has a fair amount of neutral colors though. So yeah, let me um, get these, oh gosh, yeah, I might wait, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm going to have to figure this out. So these are each 72, I, I'm going to have to take some of my markers, uh, so I have these tiered um, things of markers and um, I'm going to have to take some of them out and put them somewhere else because I need the room for the Copics because they definitely get first choice on on the tiers so let me go get these swatched out and then we'll talk about them and like I said I will probably do another supply haul at the very end of the month um, when the E set comes in and that should be my complete Copic sketch set so very very excited about that um, so, oh, so my lighting changed a bit. Um, I went and swatched my markers. Then I decided I needed to go ahead and get them in the um, trays. So I'll show a picture when I get the final set and show you guys the final setup. But I bought these little, I think they're Spectrum Noir marker trays that stack that look like this and um, so I had a bunch of them on the back of my desk and I decided to do some rearranging which I wasn't expecting today but um, I moved all my water-based markers like my Arteza brush pens and all that up to the top of the desk for now because I just don't really know where else to put them and now all my Copics are just sitting over here on the trays and I actually moved my light and my camera. I've been talking about some lighting issues anyway, so hopefully this will help fix it, um, may, or at least make it a little better. And um, yeah, so my desk doesn't feel quite as cramped because I don't have these big towers of marker trays staring at me right now. So um, I went ahead and set it up so that when I get that final set, I can just plug them all in and it's there and it's done so I will show you guys the final set when I get that and what it all looks like together but here's what I have so far swatched so with all this you can see these are sets A through D this is um, should be what set E gives me I if not all these then I suspect there might be a couple I have to order open stock I don't know I'll have to look but um, nice set of purples here, um, some sort of pinkish purples, uh, quite a bit of pinks, like purpley pinks, and then a um, really nice set of reds. I really like the lipstick orange that came along with this, um, these couple of sets, and um, yeah, so, and I like that salmon red too that came along. Um, so um, finally getting to the point where I've got a nice, you know, three, four, even five marker potential combo with some of these. And I'm really excited to try those out. So I have these out of order. Sorry about that. 
There we go. So um, sets A and B typically carry a lot of the oranges and yellows I've noticed and then this set complemented a lot more yellows. Um, so uh, keep that in mind but um, I feel like the yellows are getting real interesting now. Um, I'm curious to see what all these missing oranges are going to bring. Um, and then the greens are really nicely fleshed out um, in these four sets. It looks like we're just missing um, a few crucial pieces. But like your light greens, um, your medium greens are really nice. Um, your kind of yellowish greens, um, well your yellowish greens are here, but like more your like brownish kind of olivey type greens. There's some really nice ones there. Um, you've got some like real dark olive ones. I had two markers that seemed to at least have dried out on one side or are just weird and that was the marine green. The chisel side works okay um, so I think it's just the brush tip and uh, horizon blue which I'm going to show you guys in a minute. It was weird like when I tried to put it down on the swatch like it was acting weird so I'm probably, I mean, two markers out of two sets of 72, I guess, isn't the worst thing in the world, but it does kind of suck because it's like, you know, you drop this much on markers, they really all, sh none of them should be dry, but depending on how long they've been sitting in a warehouse, it could be a lot worse too, so I do really like the Horizon Green, so um, I will be probably going ahead and ordering both of those just as regular markers as I said before if the tips are already dried out I don't know how long they've been dried out it's really hard to get them to Copics to really take ink well after the tips have been dried out for a super long time so I may just go ahead and cut my losses and just pick up those two markers separate the blues are really nice like there's just not a lot of blues left um, with um, the final set. So you can really get a good look at, um, I'm curious what all these colors are going to look like uh, when we get those. But um, And then you've got your um, browns and your neutral tones, your peaches, your skin tones. Um, again, those are really well established. There's a couple missing, but not too bad. Um, then you've got your grays. And so all the grays with the exception of, no, the toner gray zeros there. The double zero cool gray and warm gray are missing. I'm assuming they're in that final set. But um, I really like the grays. I love the toner gray. I think out of all the grays, that might be my favorite. Um, the neutral and cool gray, I do see differences, but they're kind of similar. The warm gray and the toner gray again are kind of similar but this gives more of a <laughs> warm gray. Huh? So this really feels like a just legit neutral gray to me this toner gray. So um, we'll be curious to use that. I'm really intrigued by these fluorescents. Like those look gorgeous. I love that purple and green. Like I live for those types of bright colors. So I'm actually thinking I'm going to be using the fluorescents quite a bit, particularly these last four because they're just not quite as bright as like the pinks and oranges. So I really like that they included those. Those just seem like fun colors. So, so yeah, there we are. We are waiting on the final set. Um, so, I mean, I might contact the company had sold it and just say by the way two of the markers were dry and just because it was just in set D. Um, set C seemed perfectly fine. Um, so I mean I might contact them and ask but again two markers I'm not too worried about. Now had it been half dozen or more I probably would be throwing a fit um, or a mild fit at least. So so yeah, there we go. Um, I'm really excited to get into playing with these um, and using them in different ways. Like Amazon paper is going to be a lot different using them than say um, like actual nice marker type paper. So it's going to be fun figuring out how to use them across different types of paper. Um, I really would like to get back into marker blending. Um, 
but I've been out of it for so long I feel a little bit out of practice so I don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes so there are my Copics so surprisingly quick um, this was one of the reasons I was going to do this supply haul at the end of the month and um, was I was waiting on the scotch co scotch wow Copic sketch uh, set E uh, markers and it was the last set that I needed to complete my Copic sketch set and they had told me that they were going to send it without the plastic case that it normally comes in because I guess shipping all the way from Japan like that the cases can shatter obviously that could be a cut risk um, if somebody's opening that and the case is shattered so I was like okay cool you're just sending me the open markers you know no big deal but then I get this and um, I didn't realize I guess what they did and I hope that this is right is they yeah they're all different colors okay good um, they they built the set E out of um, the little three packs of the markers and um, which is fine I feel like that would have been a little more expensive but maybe I don't maybe that's not the case maybe I'm maybe uh, maybe that's not the case when it comes to buying these so little c unconventional packaging but like I am okay with it as long as I actually got what I you know what I purchased so um, and it looks like these are all different color sets so um, I'm going to do something there so this shows the swatch hmm. so let me I guess let me get all these packages open let me add them to my swatch chart and let's see if we're missing anything all right so yeah that actually worked out pretty good um i am 99.9 .9 <laughs> complete with my um copic marker set and um, i'm going to put a picture here showing what they all look like set in my um uh marker uh storage unit and uh i do have extras extra room but that's just for extra markers um there a while back i had bought a just off it was like a copic skin tone set and so i had some duplicates so i'm like keeping my duplicates in some of the extra spaces but um yep they look so pretty together i'm just missing basically there's a couple gaps but really and truly um i'm missing just one marker um, and I'm not sure what it was supposed to come with <laughs> so <laughs> it wasn't this set from when I looked at the picture so anyway here is the full color chart just about filled out in all its glory um, it's a little messy I I'm not super precise when I swatch so um, one fun thing was I realized I actually had vermilion but I had it stored in an, uh, another set of markers because I was having trouble finding a good red orange so I was able to rescue that marker so that is all your blue violets your purples going into um, your pinks and then starting to go into some orange reds and reds over here with a nice little rose set right here so this set um, even though it's packaged a little differently absolutely worked it filled in all the gaps um, so um do recommend and and the cool thing is i feel like in previous sets in the entire big plastic case most of the time i'll have one or two markers that are dry which is what happened with set uh, d um i think c was fine but in these little three packs i didn't have a single marker that seemed dry so um maybe maybe that's better 
honestly. So I don't know. Um, but anyway, then we have our oranges and our yellows. Some, well, red oranges, yellows, yellow greens, and then getting into our greens. And um, so I've got a couple markers. I had to order about four markers because two were dry. I was missing one and I don't know where it went. Well, there's two of them are missing and I don't know where they went. One I know I owned and I cannot for the life of me figure out why it's not in this case. Um, I'm sure I grabbed it at some point and stuck it somewhere as I want to do. Um, but I just went ahead and ordered another marker because I want this set complete and done and they're going to stay together and I'm not going to pull any markers out to use separately unless I bring them right back because <laughs> so, they're not cheap markers. Um, here are the greens going into blue greens, into blues. You can see the glaring one I'm missing for sure is cobalt blue, which is B26. And I cannot recall what set that's supposed to be in. When I looked at the chart for this set, it didn't look like it was in this one. Um, so I don't know what set that's actually supposed to come in. But that was the only one I'm missing. Now some of these may look like, like they're missing, like this floral white. But I assure you it is the palest, palest kind of um, pinkish white. It's a floral white. And so it's there. It's just, so um, I'll explain what this last set had here in just a minute. And then finally our browns into our grays. This set was a really big one, um, set of three, um, that I was waiting, curious to see what the colors were going to be. I like this khaki and fig a lot. And uh, pecan's a nice reddish brown color so um yeah so we are just about done with these um i think i said i put i put in a picture yeah yeah okay so what did this set have i mean it was everything that just filled in the gaps of the other sets but i spent a lot of time i feel like on this page filling in a lot of um violets and pinks um a lot of the lightest shades were in this set so in your other sets you're going to get the darker shades but like the R that's four zeros after it a lot of the ones that have four zeros were in this set um, so the lightest shades were in this set so um, and and like I said they just were there were definitely plenty of three sets like this rose quartz Pale Heath and Heath were in here, which is a nice complimentary three sets. So um, a lot of pale shades. This pale grape, early grape and light grape, I think like one of these was in there. So um, a lot of ones to finish out three sets. I don't think there was as much yellow orange there were a few the tuscan orange which was yr27 i know was one which is a really nice dark brownish orange color um and um i was trying to look so there were two colors that were dry and set i think it was set d and i had to reorder them i just went ahead and ordered new markers from Blick, there's marine green and then horizon green, which did this really weird thing when I tried to swatch it. It's a beautiful color, so, um, but like ocean mist looks like it's not even there, and it's just, it's just very light, as is like the snow green is as well. That snow green to the, well, actually to the petroleum blue is just a really nice. But I'd say definitely snow green to holiday blue is a real pretty combo. Um, particularly, I would think, for snow. So a lot of these established some really nice, like, blends. Like right here, you've got from pretty much processed blue all the way to this pale Celestine. Um, a real nice uh, 
dark to light. So, very cool. So yeah, four markers basically um, keeping me from the set um, of no, f as far as I know, of no fault of the collections. But again, I don't know where that cobalt blue was supposed to come from. And for all I know, that was in my original set. And I've had my original set for a couple years now. It's very likely, it's very possible that I've just lost that marker over time. Again, doing like I did with a vermilion and just pulling it for something else and then forgetting to put it back. So I might find that one in the ocean green and if I do then I just have backup markers. So so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to have this set complete and start playing around with it. Little nervous because <laughs> they're just they're just so expensive, right? And I only have refills for the first set. So that's going to be the next project is getting the refills for all the markers. Um, because I will have to be a little careful in how I use these because um, I have found that if I dry out a marker entirely, then I wait on picking up refills. For some reason, the tip just if it's a couple weeks, it's one thing, but if it's like a month or two, I seem to have a real, real trouble with the, if the tip's super dry, with it ever reviving the marker well again. So if anybody has any tips on that, let me know. But I, you know, I try not to run markers completely dry before I can get the refills. But that's going to be the next long project, is investing in refills for these. So yeah, um, if anybody want to know what it was like to have the complete Copic set and what it looks like, um, I'm just about there. So um, let's move on to the next thing. Next up, we'll just continue with the markers. I have wanted these for a long time um, and have had them on my wish list for a long time. And because I love how these do, the few I've had that I've tried in the Disney books, I love them. And um, so I decided to splurge a bit and go ahead and get the 60 pen set. Um, of course, my concern is how long will these last because they're not, um, huge markers, but if I'm using them in small sections, um, or as like outlining or something like that, then hopefully they'll last a pretty good long time. So this is the 60 set. I've not cracked it open yet. I have bought like a basic five, like basic color set, but mostly I've just been using the black brush pens because I like them so much. I really wish these came in more than 60 colors. I was sitting there, I was like, really? Just 60 colors? Woof! See, we're gonna have to play a little bit with the lighting here. But that plastic, I can't really help that, so. So let's pull this out of the plastic. This does also include a black brush pen. Um, Pigmented, and the thing I like about these is this is India ink, but it is, um, I, hopefully I didn't call it water-based because they're not water-based, but it's India ink, and um, it's, I can use it on double-sided paper like the um, um, Disney books, and it won't bleed through. So that's one of the reasons I really like these. Like, I, yeah, so very nice little box. I will probably just honestly keep them in the box. Oh, I was like, what is this string for? So the string is, what? Well, it's supposed to pull them out, but you know, if you yank it, it like really pulls them out. So that you have them tiered and you can um, easily see what you have. So that is cool. I like that. You've got your little book. So I need to figure out how I'm going to swatch these. I don't want to use a big paper, but like maybe something small with small little sections. I don't know. I feel pretty lazy 
today after all the <laughs> after all the extra copic work um that i did not anticipate <laughs> oh, okay and you can tie it off back here if you want to well that's what the directions say okay that's cool i don't think there's enough rows that it really bothers me but um I guess I'm going to see how I can swatch these next and we will um, take a look at the colors for these. So let me work on that. All right, so I found a swatch chart online and I'll post it. Um, there were a couple errors in it that have been looked like they were reprinted. Let me go ahead and mark those out. I just printed this out on regular paper. I, I didn't really want to like mess with it too much. I just wanted to get it on paper. And um, this gives you a dry color and wet color option. So I'm kind of intrigued by the idea of wetting the India ink and seeing what it does. But again, I'm just not, I, I'm tired today. I'm not bothered to mess with it. Right now, I just care about the dry color. So I went ahead and laid that down on the swatch chart, like I said. This one I'm not too concerned about. I just wanted to get it down so I could color match like the Disney pages. So they're not in order of their numbers or this swatch. The swatch that she set up, they weren't in order. So I went ahead and put them back, uh, put them in the correct order. I actually am rethinking this case, but I don't have anywhere else to put them right now. I notice when like you come down to just one or two markers in one of these um, if you have them set up right like this heaven forbid you have a marker fall down because it's just long enough to get caught down in there and then you have to kind of tip it and hold it to be able to pull the marker out so it's kind of a pain with the uh, extra little clips on them you have to be careful so your clips don't so that it's not super um, easy to use but um i have nowhere else really to put them right now so i feel like this is good enough but here are the colors they're all matching up um, as far as i can tell with the colors like in the faber castell polychromo set at least you know 60 of the colors and uh so you've got a few skin tones some reds some yellows just a few oranges um, just a few purples, like one real true purple, and then kind of a lavender. A few blue greens, some blues, fair amount of greens and blues, and then some browns, and then you've got a bunch of grays at the end. So if you guys were really curious as to like what the 60 set contains, there's no duplicate colors in it. There's like a really fancy box set you can buy that's like crazy expensive. And what I figured out is it carries like duplicate colors. There's only 60 colors max that have been made so far. So if you see a set like that, unless you want the duplicate colors, like I don't recommend that. Um, it's legit only 60 colors. And in this, there are no duplicates to it. Now, the one exception, and I showed that earlier, were the metallic ones. And they do have some metallics out. And I picked up a couple, like a gold and... But they're not brush so that's another thing too these are all brush tip and so you have to be careful i noticed when ordering on blick to make sure it's actually saying brush tip on it and unless you want the different tips so i am like i said i'm genuinely curious to see what happens when you wet these um, and I feel like we'll play around with that in the future, but man, I just don't have it in me today. <laughs> so if you were curious what the 60 set gives you, this is what it gives you. Now, is this probably way too much money to spend on markers that I'm going to use in color by number books? Yeah, probably. Like I wouldn't say people should do that. So on top of this, I also got these. Let me grab them. I don't know if I have it in me to swatch these today. We may have to swatch these tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Lord. I got these as well. So I do have some water-based markers. But it bothers me because they're streaky. Like, really streaky. But I've heard a lot of good things about these. In that, yeah, they still streak a little. But they're more controlled, I guess. Um, so these are the Sadler double-ended fiber tip pens. I got the 120 set. 
um, not only want to use these in the Disney books, but also in, um, uh, like, just regular color by number books as well. So, and um, just depending on how they do, you know, maybe in other books as well. Well, wow, that's a really interesting tiered approach there. Looks like there's some metallics here in the back. That is weird. Like, they're not in any way put together by color. So, to actually swatch these out is going to be interesting. Like I said, I'm probably, so it comes with a really fine tip and then the felt, the regular felt tip. So, yeah, I'm probably going to pick this back up tomorrow. I'm, <laughs> I have swatched and done all I can do on this day. And so we'll pick back up with the swatches for these. I'll see if I can find some online, um, like I did with the other, just to make life easier on me. If not, then I can use, um, some of the uh, other swatch charts that I picked up. I actually have a 150 swatch chart that I got from Coloring Bliss that might actually work well for this. And yeah, it's, you know, I'll be short, but eh. They'll be on paper. That's the important part. <laughs> All right. I'll show you guys that um, here. And for you, it'll be like it's just happening immediately. So, quick note on these. Um, I realized... <laughs> I said I was going to swatch these and show these, but then I realized they don't have a number on them. Um, so what I did was, um, because I want to go ahead and get this up um, on the 19th, um, I ordered some number stickers from Amazon to like number these. Um, so I can just stick them on. Hopefully they'll stay. Um, my plan is to, once I get the stickers, to swatch them. Um, I'm going to store them. I have this old bag that I stored markers in at one point. Um, so like I'm going to store them in sets of 25 um, through here because they don't really fit in a standard um, like pencil case because they're such thick um, markers. So I figured this would be a great place to store them. And um, so I can actually show you guys the swatch. I will do that Monday via the community page and um just show you how they swatch there um if you want to see how they color i did do a page man i am just dropping everything today um i did a page of stylish animals which i'm very close to finishing using um the stadlers now these are water-based markers um the there are two tips they've got like a super fine tip that is like not too bad but like for really tiny spaces I wouldn't use it like when I'm coloring but like big squares like this I use the uh, other tip the bigger tip and um, I did this page and it, they're very bright very pretty um, I'm not, they look a bit streaky, but all water-based markers are going to look that way. So, um, you can see here, I use water-based markers here. That's actually the majority of what I use in this book. The only time I use alcohol markers is when I run out of a color. So, um, I think there, I actually use quite a few alcohol markers, but, um, they give a very nice bright look and I like the look of them in these books. So he turned out very colorful. And um, I like them very much. I think they're going to work great for these types of books. Um, uh, they covered the area well without being too, like alcohol markers do tend to bleed on Amazon paper. So you kind of have to be careful when filling in specific squares like this with the alcohol markers. Um, that's why I like the water-based markers a little better. Um, but yeah, I like them really well. I think they are a nice addition to my collection. And like I said, I'm going to keep them in that bag. I will show the color chart on Monday. I just don't want to hold this up for like an entire week just to, um, but if you guys are really curious, a lot of these colors, they're not in any rhyme or reason in this package. And I cannot keep them in this package. It's already annoying me. Um, but they're not, I'm going to say they're probably going to have a bunch of them that are very close in color. Um, like these two right here look like almost the exact same marker. 
but that's fine because what I'm using them in when I run out of a color then I have another color to use and that's been my biggest problem with the water-based markers right now is when I run out of the color a color I'm using sometimes I have to resort to using an alcohol marker to get the color I want because I don't have it in water-based so I don't mind that really and truly um, I'd rather have the bigger set and have multiple markers I can use so very cool um, also want to try these on a Disney page so at the end of the month I'm going to try these on a Disney page and I'm gonna try the fabric castells on a Disney page um, and let's compare the two and see how both of them look so I'm curious to see that how that comparison is gonna go so there you go just a follow-up on that on to the next thing all right so i know i know but michelle you don't color with color pencils very often why do you have so many sets and i don't know what to tell y'all except <laughs> except i um as y'all know buying has been a form of therapy for me lately and i really genuinely said i held out for a long time on these and i said i wasn't going to buy any more pencils and um so long in fact that they originally were the 72 set and had not upgraded yet to the bigger set and then they upgraded the bigger set and i was in buying mode and um so i decided to um splurge and get these they are budget-friendly pencils, so at least I wasn't shelling out, you know, at least I wasn't buying $300 Holbeins. Though, I mean, after just, <laughs> she says right after she gets done showing y'all hundreds of dollars in Copic markers. I am not compelled to buy the Holbeins. The markers, yes, just because I prefer markers, but... The Holbeins, I'm definitely, I don't know, I've never really had any desire to buy those. So I guess there's at least a limit. <laughs> it may not be a low limit, but there's at least a limit for me. So here are these pencils. I've heard a lot of good things about them. The packaging is very interesting. Huh. Yes, very interesting packaging. Oh, there's two. Okay. There's two sets here. All right, I see. Very interesting looking pencils too. They don't have like a band or a cap on them like um, a lot of other pencils do. I do kind of like how they're stored. I'm still going to put them in a pencil case. But I like this foam. I like that they're sitting in this foam. That is really cool. Um... So yeah, let me get ready to swatch them out. I got a little bit different swatch chart for these. Um, Color with Claire has been putting together uh, family color charts for certain brands of pencils. And her, is it called Coffee or Kofi? It's K-O-F-I shop. And it's one of those things where you can like leave a tip or you know pay like a dollar for something or you, you can pay however much you want or if you just want it for free but um you know just keep in mind this type of stuff does take some work and effort so i do try to put a little bit like i would if these were up on like a Etsy shop or something so um anyway this is the one from color with claire it's actually got her name down here at the bottom and I thought I tried this one because um, there's an unnamed swatch strip that I can download that I'll probably eventually use but I was curious to see what the family color charts look like so I thought I would try this first um, plus I like these boxes aren't too big to fill in and so um, let me try this and we'll come back and take a look at the colors all right well, camera went a little wonky why is my light not feeling so bright today it's probably just the extra lighting in here surely it's not going dead that quickly huh oh okay hang on a minute 
<laughs> Y'all are like, what are you doing? Ooh, yeah, no, let's not do that. That's too dark. Let's brighten it up a bit. There we go. Okay. So I got my pencil swatched. Um, let me tell you, I, I like the pencils. I do. Um, but the real winner here, the thing that I think is going to make me use these pencils for it, more is this color chart. Um, I absolutely adore this. This is the thing I have the hardest time with when I am coloring is picking out color combinations and picking out color combinations that make sense in terms of color family because most of the pencils you get are not in any order of color family um, like you know your lemon yellows are in with your other yellows and until I get I know I've been coloring for like five years but it's been a very casual thing and at some point I would like to think that I'll become um, more willing to like learn a little bit more about things like color theory and color families and stuff but until then this makes it so much easier on me i really appreciate color with claire doing these um but like looking at this and seeing them in color families like in my head i'm already inspired by these color families i know places i can use these like these would make for a good set of sunflower colors um if I wanted to color sloths in like a million sloths or something like this set would look really good and probably this set would look really good um, for skin tones you have you know all down through here um, all the different greens are together nicely um, and this like if I was going to say any what blues if there are any colors that are my favorite it's these types of blues um, and I just, I adore this chart. This is going to make it so much easier. I like my little swatch cards, don't get me wrong, but I think for every chart she puts out, I'm going to be purchasing them if I own the pencils because um, I just, this is how I'm going to be motivated to use my pencils more. Like I can already, already have the itching to use them just looking at this. So, um, anyway, these came down on the paper really well. Um, I tend to color with a heavy hand, so, um, they do seem like, um, I don't know how to explain them. They're not super soft. Like, I don't think I would say they're like Arteza or Prismacolor soft, but they're not super, they're definitely not Crayola. They're not, um maybe not as soft as chroma flow i'm trying to think color softs maybe like i'd say these are middle of the road when you're looking at softness um i would probably be curious to see how these do on a toothier paper for me because i color with a heavy hand um the softest pencils do the best on this smooth cardstock like this i have and the, um, usually the harder pencils do better on toothier paper. So, like, I feel like these might be the best of both worlds. But I would be really curious to see converting these to actual, you know, coloring pages. I do like the colors of these. Um, some of the groups, you know, you can definitely tell a nice shift of colors. Um, some of them in the blues look very similar, like Prussian blue and Copenhagen blue look pretty darn close to each other. Ocean blue and manganese blue and cerulean blue, these all look very close to each other. Um, so I do feel like, um, like this perlene violet and Tuscan red look very close to each other. So, um, I feel like they could have been a little more versatile with the colors. However, um, given that those are critical pieces to, you know, your, your coloring, it's, I would focus, what I would do to get the best use out of the set is I would create, you know, two, three, four, uh, color pencil color sets, um, using one of these colors use it till it burns up and then I have 
you know, one or two other pencils. So, um, not the end of the world. I feel like there's, you know, I see one, two, three, four, maybe four sets of colors that look like that. So out of 126, that's um, pretty good in my opinion. The rest of them are very obvious differences in colors. Um, eh, maybe five if you get down to the browns. You also get these three fluorescents, which I kind of wish color pencil companies would just put out a pack of fluorescents separate. Um, like, I almost would just like other colors rather than the fluorescence. Um, I wish like they would put out fluorescence and then they put out some metallics. Now they've got a silver and gold that if I hold it to the light look pretty darn good. So I would like to see what this company would do with a metallic set which is actually what I don't have yet. You know that turquoise gray it does, in a cadet blue doesn't quite have the shine of the silver and gold but it these could easily be converted to like metallic color. But um, what I was saying is like I'd like to see these people put out a fluorescent set and maybe a metallic set. I don't have a good metallic set yet. Um, I think I it's probably something I'm going to buy soon. So I need to take some time and look at it. I tell you what, I like this so much. So look for me to use these this month. I'm getting an itch to use some colored pencils. Um, I like these so much that I'm actually, <laughs> so this isn't really, this isn't something I bought this month. However, I cannot tell you when I bought these. And they have sat in this tin ever since, and I have not done a coloring haul with them. So you know what? We're just going to include them in this one because I have also the color family chart from Color with Claire of the Starjoy Golds. So I want to do this again and see how these play on that chart. So um, I did buy these. Oh Lord, I can't tell you. It had to be last summer. And I got everything else swatched and just never got around swatching these. I don't know why. I don't know why. But like you see, they are untouched. Here's, if you want, I, oh, I take that back. I did try to swatch a couple of them just to play. I do like the swatch and comp. So, um, my goodness, why can't I think of her name? She has a coloring, uh, color my world on here, but I can't think of her name. I apologize. Um, worked with the creator of these pencils to create this gold set and one of the things I really like that she does is like a swatch and comp type chart and you have that here where you can color one color and then compare it to another color around it which I think is kind of neat. Um, Lori Green that's her name so it's in here. So I tell you what we're going to do we're going to also numbered in consecutive order trying to see oh um so we're going to swatch these two but one more thing sorry that i forgot about to mention about the arctics so they have a number so all i actually organized them in the case by color family and um they have a number but it honestly is really hard to read on this uh color barrel and so it's easier to read the name. I do wish on this chart that the numbers would also be there. And this is why. Um, typically, what I've started to do when I swatch these and put them in the case is I will write the number on the case. So that when I take them out, it's very easy to find their place to put them back. However, I don't mind it for this particular set because... I can't hardly read the numbers anyway. Um, I'd probably be better off just writing the color names. But if I had one thing I would suggest um, to color with Claire is to, um, it would get a little clunky. I don't know why I have that posted. Isabel, I don't know who you were, but I think you won a giveaway at one point. And maybe it would make this too busy to have the names and the numbers. But, um, just I like doing that because it's very easy for me to find where my pencils go back um, 
of course writing the name is just a lot more to have to write than the number so um but i think i can be okay with it for this chart it's it's a minor thing so what i'm going to do is the same thing with these stargoy 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 jolds <laughs> y'all it's been this week feels like it has been a million years i mean just just seriously um yeah i anyway okay I, so i'm going to print out the color chart the color with clear uh color chart for these i'm going to do the same thing i do have um another uh thing to put them in and then we're going to look at these as well and this will work out really well because then we can compare these to the arctics um because it's about the same number of pencils so curious to see how that turns out now it is like crazy bright right here do you see that this is what i have to deal with with my lighting like all day every day i thought it got a little better with these little extra lights i bought but maybe only when I do later in the day. Okay, let me swatch these and then we'll talk about these for a minute. Okay, let's take a look here. As I'm continuing to work on this, it's like my uh, lighting keeps changing. There we go. All right, so Stargoy, did it again, Stargoy, <laughs> Stargoy Jold. <laughs> Star Joy Gold. I cannot say this word, this phrase. Um, so these have been swatched. Um, I made a few mistakes, as you can see. So um, one thing I wanted to note that I think is unique about these um, is, uh, so they do have a number with them, a code, um, but the text on them is very large. And for, um, honestly, I... Am very pleased with that and it's very uh, with that black text it's very easy to read and it's very large and I know um, a lot of us have like sight issues and so being able to see the color name and and everything in a larger text is really nice because I just can't tell you how often I have to squint to see the number or name on the end of a pencil so I do appreciate that however because some of these have more than one word, um, they go to another line. So unless I, I learned early on that I, I need to make sure that there's not more than one line of text. And so thus I had a couple of whoopsies, um, but those were fixed. So do keep that in mind. If you get these, just make sure you read um, the whole barrel just to make sure you have the right color. <laughs> um, so, I like how these laid down better than I like the Arctics um, because I, I like heavy pressure. These lay down a lot of nice color very easily. Um, sorry, I had to take a drink. I feel like with the Arctics pencils, I had to press just a little bit harder to get um, some good color. I feel like these are very interesting colors. I, I don't feel like... They're necessarily different colors than you would get in um, other sets. But like the color families on this one compared to the Arctic's look um, really interesting to me. Um, and some of the things like the Jade and Spearmint, um, the Avocado and Misty Morning almost look like the exact same color to me. Um, but I like this kind of grasshopper, lorry green, and pickle. Like, I like that color combo as well. Um, some of these, like, these may be in the same color family, but, like, I could see using the coffee cream, the ginger root, but you'd have to have a real light touch with the sepia. Same over here with, like, the tree bark. Um, this is a artist developed palette, so... Um, Lori is an artist. She has a lot of knowledge in, in that field. So, um, I feel like this is a very artist friendly palette. Um, so, uh, but it does feel a little bit different than other palettes. So like maybe if you want some different, a few different types of colors, one thing to note is you don't really get any cool grays. You get like a French gray and a warm gray. 
Um, so keep that in mind. I have plenty of sets that have cool grays in them, so no worries there. I felt like there were a lot of reds and pinks. But again, I think it's just because of how these are spread out in their color families it felt that way. I do feel like there's quite a few purples, which was very nice. Um, at first I was like, there's not a lot of browns, but then I realized the browns are actually spread out well in the color families, so that's why. Um, okay, so one problem I had, one pencil was the yellow ochre. Um, I think it was just mixed badly. I am getting this weird kind of, part of it's yellow, part of it's green. <laughs> and I tried to scribble beside it. I thought maybe if I sharpen it down, it'll, um, maybe it was just on the tip, right? But it's not. Like, I kept scribbling it. And you can see from the Artix card, like, that green's still there. So the yellow ochre is kind of a bum pencil um, because I don't think you can buy these open stock. You know, I'm not going to buy a whole other set just for one pencil. And at this point, I've waited so long. This is why it's important to go ahead and check your pencils when you buy them. Um, don't do what I did because then if there's an issue, you can contact the seller. I don't feel right contacting the seller after like, you know, six to eight months of owning the set. Like, I, I'm sure that he would still be cool with it. But, I, you know, that was my own fault. I should have tested these when I first got them. So, um, I have plenty of yellow ochres. I have plenty of pencils and other sets that will probably work just fine. Um, in fact, there's... The yellow ochre here might be okay. I think it's, it kind of, yeah, it matches in that color family. So the yellow ochre here would be just fine as a substitute. So yeah, when you put them side by side, um, like I said, it is interesting. Um, you, you get, like I said, the, I, I wish I am not doing well with my explanations today. But, um, I feel here, like, you get, these feel a little more spread out, I guess. Like, you get more variety, but you also get little groups of two and threes over here a lot more than you do here. Like, a lot of these, you get a couple sets that are kind of just two pencils at a time, but most of these are grouped, like, pretty significantly, um, into like groups of colors and these feel a little more spread out which is okay um one of the things i really want to test these with are um using a very light like if it's single-sided paper using like alcohol marker a light alcohol marker as your like what am i trying to say here this one i feel like has some very nice light colors i actually really like this alien green um, it feels slightly different than the actual green here, but like, I, I love this color combo, but, um, I would like to really try like these on a paper where I use an even lighter blue, like, um, Neo Color 2 or marker or something to establish a base and then use my other colors here. So even if it feels like, um, Maybe you don't have that three pencil set. Try using two pencils and introducing like a light watercolor layer or a marker layer as your third color. Um, you just use that as a base layer and um, then you could use the other colors as well. I do like this pastel green in the Arctic too. I feel like that is not a green you get very often. So... Um, Unless it's in a pastel set. And that could be it too. You could pull out a pastel set with these. And probably. Um, but you'd have to match them up. And like I said. I'm not. Um, Lori actually does. Um, classes and stuff. Where they talk about color families. And, and like more advanced color theory type stuff. And again. I. I would like to learn, but like right now, there's so much else going on in my life. I'm like, uh, maybe not right now. So I kind of like, you know, am lazy and kind of want it done for me. <laughs> so I don't have to think that much, which is okay. It's okay. I mean, we're all at different places in our life when it comes to coloring and why we color and how we color. So um, I got to tell you though, these charts are... 
I love the new stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm hugging, uh, you know, secretly. I'm probably going to take the Copics to bed with me and just hug them while I sleep. Um, but like, and I love the new pencils, but really these charts, when it comes to the color pencils, I feel like are really changing how I feel about my color pencils. And so I'm eager to actually use my color pencils. So you might actually see some pictures from me this month. Um, I think, yeah, I like using my little, uh, swatch books, but what I think I'm going to do, so I think I have the Prismacolor, the Polychromos, the Black Widow, the Luminance. I, I grabbed everyone that was on her Kofi page. Um, I will probably grab everyone she puts out that I have color pencils for, um, I, I think I'm going to create just a whole new set of swatches in a swatch book that are like this. And I would love to do a video once I do that, showing how they all look compared to each other. I think that would be a fun video. Um, just so you could kind of see, like, don't do what I did and just buy all these colored pencil sets that, you know, all may have very similar colors. But, like, it can really show you, like, here easily what the differences are between the sets like i feel like there's a lot more pinks and um red violets in the star joy golds than you have in the arctic so like i feel like these sets could be complementary to each other as well so okay um enough babbling about that on to the next thing so this um probably other than the Copics was my biggest investment and uh, is actually kind of funny because um, if you've been around for a while you've known that um, I have mixed feelings about the Neo Color Tubes <laughs> and you're thinking why oh, sorry I hit the mic you're thinking why Michelle why would you buy the full set if you're mixed feelings about it so I've had the 30 for like ever and um I can't, I can't, because I want to use them more, um, and because I just wanted, to, <laughs> I don't have to just, I know, I don't have to justify my purchases, I tell this all the time to people, I don't have to justify my purchases to anybody, um, and the way I can use these in different ways, particularly rubbing on a palette, um, then it's okay <laughs> like it's okay to get the full set right and like i was talking about earlier with the colored pencils these are going to be great for establishing a base layer and then adding um color pencil on top of them so yes i splurged on this oh this is a swatch chart that's interesting so this thing here the thing that was it was wrapped in how do you take it apart i guess you cut it there is if you can see it where you can actually swatch it and i am going to probably use whoop, hit the mic again my god um i'm probably going to use this i just need to get some scissors oh wait there we go i'm actually probably going to use this this way i can just keep it in the tan and it's one less swatch chart that I have to um, try to do and manage. And I guess I could, this is a hard enough, can I actually just rip this? Awesome. Okay. So, um, yeah, this one I'm probably going to use, um, I will probably activate them because I can't for the life of me imagine that I will ever just use these dry. Um, you know, I could buy the Neo Color ones if I want like some fancy crayons. <laughs> no, I don't need to give myself any more ideas. Um, but here they are. They are, um, they do have light fast ratings, which is very cool if you're looking to do art or commission art. Um, I personally am not too stressed about it when it comes to coloring books but you know some people might be so here is a little fancy paper what is this 
What is this? These look like almost like stickers. Are they stickers? They're stickers. What am I using them for? They're stickers, but I think they're just showing the different types of Karen Dash products. I don't know. I don't know what's happening there. All right. So uh, here they are in all their glory. Let's sit there and run our fingers over them. Um, so because I am... I, I, I've been swatching all day, guys, and I'm feeling a bit lazy. You can tell, like, I haven't even... I'm glad I have backups. These are probably going to be the colors I use the most. And so, at this point, I'm going to consider these as backups, um, which is fine. Um, I'll at least hold on to them. I, you know, I don't know. I've got a friend in mind that might actually like these, so I might ask her if she wants them. They're spoken for, I'm going to say right now, they're already, like, spoken for, because I'm pretty sure she would love to have these, so, um, yeah, I feel weird keeping them, because, I mean, you can see, like, I've used them, you know, particularly the light colors, I've used some, but, like, at this point, I think I would just rather do this, and then buy these as, um, one-offs in the future, yeah, that's what we're going to do, okay, so, and looking at the colors, um, you know, here you get, like, your one light skin tone, and then you get a couple darker browns that, you know, would be considered skin tones. Um, wait a minute. Am I crazy? Where are the yellows? Is there another set to this? What is... Am I, cr I'm crazy, right? Like, this is not 84. I guess it is. All right, now I gotta count them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's not 84. What the heck? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh my gosh so the whole metal tray it's not just a plastic tray it's another metal tray that comes out yeah these aren't like being put in anything else this is the best storage that could be with these and so yeah all right now i feel a little less i feel pretty stupid anyway um sorry that was probably really loud here you notice you get just a couple yellows and a like a peach color, but in this one you get a lot more light skin tones and then um, like it looks almost like a cream color, light yellow here, and then quite a few more yellows. So that's pretty much it. You get some nice, you get a nice color range in this 30, you really do, but um, this just expands it out so much more. So um, yeah. I can't believe I, I was like this. I got ripped off. I was so mad for like five seconds. That's so funny. Um, yeah, so here we've got our yellows and reds. They were just done weird. Normally I see yellows and it, you know, starts that way. So um, you got your yellows and reds and your browns and some greens in here. Um, I wonder if these are split up by color families. They kind of look like they are. So, and then you've got these right here. So, let me see if I can swatch these out. This is Saturday when I'm doing this. So, I may swatch them out today, activate them in the morning or something, and finish this video up tomorrow. I think this is like, no, this is the next to last thing I have. third to last thing I have so yeah let me swatch these out and just kind of show y'all what they look like on this little chart which I'm just gonna keep in the tin I gotta trim it a little bit so we'll do that next all right I got the Neocolor 2 
uh, Aquarelle, I guess is what they're called now. Um, Swatch, there's a few that are still drying, but for the most part, um, I went ahead and just activated them on here because they can look, um, of course, when you add water to them, they are, um, you know, like not quite as vibrant, though with the new color too, I mean, the difference between them is minuscule compared to um, a, a lot of cheaper brand type watercolor pencils and things like that. Like these still have really vibrant color, but there's still a slight shade difference I find. So it's better to go ahead and activate them with water because I know I'm not going to just be scribbling them on paper without, you know, putting, putting water to them. So here's the swatch chart and um, <clears throat> yeah. So there is a silver and a gold and then like a bronze. This is kind of a light gold and a light orange yellow. Um, but they're not really shiny. They're shiny when you rub them down on paper. When you activate them with water, they are not shiny as far as I can tell. So just keep that in mind. Um, I like... I appreciate that companies, you know, put in like a few metallic pencils or a few fluorescent colors or something like that into their sets. But in on honesty, I would rather just a metallic, separate metallic set be available um, and you use other colors than these. But, you know, um, overall, there's a lot of color choices here, so... I've been thinking about trying a picture, at least one picture, with these in the background um, using gesso more than likely because the one problem I have with Neocolor 2s is it can be very difficult to get them to dissolve completely. Actually, I should probably just leave this out and let it fully dry. Um, it, like, um, where is it? I think the perfect example I can show y'all is from Grains of Gold because I did a test on these last year. I think it was about this time last year actually. Um, I think I used Neo Colors in this one. I can't remember, but I know I used them for sure on this one. So I had done a test, um, bring that camera down. I um, tested them with, um, which page has the gesso? Wow, well at the end of the day I guess the interesting thing is you can't really tell which page has the gesso on it, so that's nice. Um, this was the gesso page and this was the one without, so, um, no excuse me, satin glazing liquid, not gesso. Um, I treated the pages because I was finding like with this page because this pa this paper has a little bit of tooth in it it was really taking some work to get it activated and it wasn't fully activating on some of the pages and I had to use a lot of water and so I wanted to test it on Hannah Carr's on paper using a treated satin glazing liquid page and a non-treated page and I found that it blended a lot easier on this page. So <laughs> there's pros and cons. This side, the Neo Colors blended a lot easier on the outside of the page than they did over here. This was a little tougher to achieve and I don't feel like looks as um, nice with the transitions as this one does. However, um, because I just sewed the whole page, putting pencil over keep saying just so satin glazing liquid putting the pencil over the satin glazing liquid it created a even toothier um, texture so I did not enjoy coloring with the pencils over it as much this side was much nicer to use the pencils and gel pens on because I didn't have as scratchy a surface so um, with these you'll see me use them more than likely unless it is a just divine watercolor paper that thick enough paper that they can activate on and not give me any trouble on more than likely I'm going to be using some sort of treatment on the paper because otherwise they get blotchy and I get upset because they don't look the way I want them to look 
Um, but if I use satin glazing liquid, I think I'm just going to use it on like the background the gesso's going on so that it doesn't impact any pencil work or any other work that I'm using on the actual uh, body of the page itself. So just a quick look there. Um, I feel a lot more comfortable using them after doing these pages last year, which is why I don't mind. Um, I think I used Neo Colors up here, and then I started using Gelatos down here. I much, if it's on an untreated page, I much prefer using the Gelatos because they're a little softer and they activate a lot easier on uh, paper. And yes, I've been slowly collecting my Gelatos too. I really should do a video where I show my gelato set and go ahead and swatch them all out. But these are nice to have as well, and um, I will be using them for sure. So I feel like I used them in a Lulu Mayo book, and I was able to get them to dissolve nicely. So like I said, a lot of it is, these are very paper, but like Joanna Basford, no. I tried these on a Joanna pa Basford page untreated, and I ruined the page. I was so mad. Um, fortunately, I have, as the one book I have two copies of, and I have two copies now because of that. All right, finally, um, I have no idea what type of kur Kuretake watercolors these are. But I saw this, um, of course, Amazon knows I'm in a buying mode and wanted to help me out. And you could buy these separate or buy them a set of three. And so I picked them up. I don't know if these are the Tambi. I, they look similar in layout to some of the Tambi watercolors I've seen. But I just know the Kuretake um, watercolors. They had pearl colors, starry colors, which are gold and silvers. And gem colors and so I decided to pick up all three sets just to just to play around with and so let's get started I think out of all these the pearl colors are my favorite um, I don't know why but when they're even still a little wet when I activated them they just like no streaking went on the paper nice well it would help if I put it in the camera nice and flawlessly have a great pearlescent sheen to them I feel like these like I said didn't give me a very streaky look to them they're honestly my favorite I think out of the three and um, one thing this 906 this like white silver color uh, keep an eye on that because you're going to be seeing that one again. But honestly, I think these are my favorites out of the three. I don't know. I feel like I did swatch all three the same way. But like these were the only ones that didn't really give me any streakiness. So maybe I just put more water in these and gave them more time to activate. I mean, it's it's possible, right? Um, but this is what I got just from first experience swatching. All right, the starry colors are supposed to be like golds and platinums and silvers. Look, there is that 906 again. Um, so if you buy these sets, the set of three, know that there are duplicates. There's a 906 in the starry night, the starry night, the starry colors and the pearl colors. There is a 903 in the starry colors and the gem colors that I'll show you in a minute. So you do get duplicates, and I did not know that when I bought these, so I'm a little bummed about that. So these are pretty colors, but they're not, they didn't go down as smoothly as I wanted them to. And again, it might just be they need a little more water to activate, um, but like these feel have to look at the computer to make sure you guys can see these they're they're shiny but they feel a little thin on the paper like I would probably use these over black more than anything I have a set of Clearos that I feel like perform a little better um but, I mean, I'm looking for gold and silver metallic type watercolors like this. Um, and I, I feel like I like the Calero set that looks like this a little better. 
so but I will keep them and I will use them and then finally we have the gem colors which honestly were well they dried a little better okay so here are the gem colors there's that 903 again so again keep in mind there's some duplicates Again, I don't know if maybe I just left the water. It just seemed to me like the pearl colors came up a lot easier um, off the palette than the other two sets did. So here, let me look at the camera or the computer. Here are the gem colors. Like when you're looking at them, they look a bit streaky, particularly the blue and the purple. When you tilt them, they do look very pretty. Like, I love the shades, but I do not like that streakiness. And like I said, maybe it's just that I simply need to leave more water on them for a longer period of time to get this, um, to not get this look. And that may very well be the case. So I will continue to play with these and see... I do like the colors, especially, <laughs> ironically, the blue and the purple here are, um, and the green are my favorite colors in this one. So, um, gonna hold on to them. Probably not going to pick up, um, any more for, I say that and I just, I keep collecting watercolors. I think all of us that collect watercolors, well, I mean, any coloring supplies, but, all of us that collect watercolors, like, we get it, right? Like, we keep saying we're not going to buy anymore, and then more pretty colors come out, and it's just like you want all the colors. And so, I'm just going to leave the little swatches. I think they're all dry. I'm just going to leave the little swatches in with the... So, these are little paper boxes that they're in. Um, I think these little trays might be plastic. I don't know how much is in these trays. It doesn't look like very much, but they're also very long, wide pans. So, like, if you had, like, a small, normal watercolor pan, this might would fill it up all the way. So, um, these probably go farther than they look at first glance. But those pearl colors, I would totally love to use the, try those um, on their own, for sure. Um, maybe on a background or something. Um, if the others don't make any progress, then I will probably um, just stick to using those over darker colors. If they're a little streaky, that way it's not as obvious. I'm just going ahead and putting them up while I'm chatting with you. It was really hard to get these open, you know, and see there's no other real way to package them except stick them back in here. Um, actually, I should probably let these dry a little more before I do that. I don't want to wind up with moldy watercolors. <sighs> Is that everything? <laughs> oh my gosh, when I finally put this video together, y'all, it is going to be very long and, um, so many different things. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and get this done, honestly, and just kind of out of the way. I might do, wait and do my books at the end of the month, or I might do them next weekend. Um, I do have a few more coming in over the next few weeks. I bought a couple from Etsy. I bought an order from Lyrica. There are some books from Amazon that are taking a while to get here. So um, I probably have, I don't know, not quite a dozen books, but not just half a dozen either, probably coming in the next few weeks. So maybe we just do a full flip through of the um, so that's probably what I'll do. I'll wait to the end of the month ish. Probably do a book haul um, to show all the books I picked up for the month. And then if I pick up any more supplies, um, I'll just show you guys those real quick. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to show you. So did I show you these? I feel like I showed you these in a video. They're little strip lights, so I was looking for a way, I'm not going to shine it directly on you, I was looking for a way to increase the lighting in my desk, and I started looking at rechargeable strip lights that, like, you can put under cabinets and stuff, and so I picked up a two set of these, and they're magnetic, so, like, you stick the magnetic up on the, this desk has a hutch, but you stick the magnet up there and then you can just connect them to that and then charge them when they need to be charged. It's like just a simple USB thing. 
in installing them, I realized I only needed the one because um, my lamp takes up this side and because being up there they shine on shiny stuff very easily, um, like you can see it right here. I can adjust that one back so it doesn't shine directly on glossy stuff and so um, I don't really need the two but that works out because one is constantly charged and ready to go. I noticed yesterday when I was working um, all day on this video that throughout the day I don't know how long these are going to last because that other one was kind of fading as the day was went on and I had to swap them out so I like that I can swap them out um, and that's probably but I can't believe I hadn't thought of them up until this point but um, they're actually working out really well until I get a new desk and honestly I just do not have the energy right now to try like was it last weekend I did some rearranging on the desk where I moved some of my marker storage just to have my Copics here and to get those all organized and lined up. Now I have piles of random markers in the room. It's a mess. Um, I'm a mess. I'm exhausted <laughs> and just tired and I'm not ready for tomorrow to be Monday. I really feel, wish more than anything right now that I could have like a week off but I just can't. So anyway, um, alright. So there you go. Um, I will try to leave at least um, particular. I may not link to everything in the comments just because that takes a lot of time. However, since these are like there's a lot of Kiritake watercolors, I will link specifically to the set that I showed y'all. Um, I will link to the color with Claire family color sheets. I, I saw yesterday on Instagram that Barbara Color is also doing the same thing and she actually has some that you can cut out and use like the swatch booklets like um, I like. So I don't know. I, I like Claire's well enough but like if there's some that she doesn't have yet I may um, get Barbara's. Hers are on Kofi too so I will link both of them there if you want to go and look and uh, just if you want to pick them up I I think they're great it's probably going to transform how I use my pencils um, being able to sort them like that so all right so there we go I hope you enjoyed I hope you have a good start to the week and bye for now